Oh, I probably first started playing it when I was about uh, six or seven years old, because my mother did it before I, I did. But it was just more or less mimicking her. Of course, it started really as a youngster playing. That, that was our playground. When we got out of school, that's where we'd head up to the cliffs and stay up there, up and down the banks until probably almost dark or chore time. But then I was, the other day I was sitting down trying to think exactly when I started to uh, do it as income. My aunt and uncle, Harrison Vanderhoop and Aunt Liney, they had been doing phages since I was a little girl. When Ma and I were doing it occasionally because we could use their stand. And then afterwards, my other cousin and I used to go up to the lighthouse and we used to sit near that and have an orange crate with our pottery on. And then it just evolved from that. Can you explain the process from start to finish? First thing you have to do is go down and find what you want. So it meant walking the beach. But that was, that was fun, because they'd always done it, you know. In those days, too, we used to uh, get the clay from up on the banks, because it was pure clay. There were veins of it that ran through the cliffs, and there wasn't so much sand. So the nearer you get down towards the beach, the more sand you get with it, unless you dig way in. So you need to dig it, haul it up the bank, did I show you before how it comes out of the bank? No. It gets in the bank in separate veins, and you dig each vein separately and dry it. And you can dry it any way you want. You can put it in the oven, dry it if you want. You can leave it out on the table or shelf so that it dries. But then when it gets to this point, you have to pound it. Are you pounding it with something? I've got a, a rock around here somewhere that I can get get in my hand and has a flat side on it and I use like a hammer. That works pretty good. Or a wooden hammer, you know, like a butcher uses to pound meat. That'll make, that makes a good one. But I have another secret that I figured out. I use my car, so I use plastic bags like that, put it under the car wheel, rock back and forth on it. <laughs> oh dear. Yep. Now I'm going to sift it. I use a cake strainer. The finer your strainer, the finer your clay is going to come out. And it's like powder, face powder. You sift it, that, that powdered clay, sift it all separately, and then you uh, mix it with water, each color separately. It won't uh, run together unless you put too much water in it, but as long as you make it like you do bread dough, it won't uh, run into each other. And that's how you have to learn, is when there's enough uh, water in it. Because if you get too much, it will run together. And if you don't get enough water, it will fall apart. So I make a big block of each color. Then I take the knife, my knife, and I cut a little piece out of each one, put it together, and mold it. And you have to kind of carefully together. You don't squish it all up, do you? No, I pound it. Because if you don't pound it to, to make them adhere to each other, it'll crack. So that's what you have to learn, is when it's at the stage, because I don't use any hardener. There's a natural hardener in there. And I think it goes back to what sand is left in there. Because no matter how much you sift it, there is some sand left in it. But you have to have so much that keeps that together. That's my theory. Right. I'm not a geologist. Sounds good to yeah. me. Yeah. So then when you make these pieces, mm -hmm. you never fire them. I don't know, but there's a reason. I don't like it. The minute they start firing, they can't keep the red from taking over. They think there's an awful lot of iron in that, but they can't control it. Traditionally, you know, in the generations past, did people make instead of clay from the cliffs? Like they, they made utensils to use themselves before we went into the uh, tourist business. But it didn't last very long because um, it's particularly unpredictable. If it did fire, 
they couldn't be sure that it and that it wouldn't crack while it was firing. And uh, they found soapstone in Rhode Island, and they found that soapstone they could make their utensils out of, and it was more predictable than the clay. So they didn't do anything decorative like this. No, they probably figured it wasn't worth it because they weren't going anywhere to buy anything. So it's only when the tourists came, tourists started coming into uh, the camp meetings, and they came from Oak Muffs up here by boat where there was a dock on the North Shore. They came there and they brought them up the cliffs in the ox car up to the lighthouse. And then between there and the beach, there was this gift shop. 